Let's hear from renowned researcher, oncologist, and professor, Dr. Elizabeth Jaffe, who this time will present on breaking news and trending topics in the world of immunotherapy. I'm very excited to talk to you about some of the new areas in cancer immunotherapy that uh, the nation and even the world is uh, taking on to try to make a big difference with cancer immunotherapy. So in 2015, Congress did support um, President Obama's um, 21st Century Cures Act. And what that did was provide significant more funding to the National Institute of Health and the National Cancer Institute to not only fight cancer, but also some other very important diseases. So I was very fortunate to be one of three co-leaders of the Blue Ribbon Panel. And we came up with 10 priorities, all of them equally important. But what was interesting was immunotherapy was finally starting to make some progress in a few diseases. And so we knew that we had to really push on how do we do a better job with immunotherapy to fight all cancers. The big question we wanted to address is how do you turn non-responding patients into responding patients to immunotherapy? So the good news is about 20% of patients with really bad cancers can respond to immunotherapy. And those are the ones who have T cells that are already there and exist in the patient that can see the cancer. So they just need one or two agents to turn them on to really fight the cancer more effectively. But 80% of patients don't have those T cells. Vaccines are the biggest success story of the 20th century other than penicillin. Vaccines have prevented so many deadly diseases. If you think about it, polio, some of the childhood diseases that were killing kids before they reached their first birthday in the early uh, 20th century, we don't even think about anymore. So vaccines really are a miracle drug with very few side effects. Let's use a vaccine to induce a T cell in a patient with cancer. The problem is we know in a patient with cancer, again, those T cells aren't gonna be able to get into the cancer. They can't get through the bark that surrounds the important tissue or conduit of nutrition that are being brought from the roots to the trees. And so we need also agents that can really drill through that bark so the T cell can get in to the important areas where the cancer is taking advantage of nutrients and growing and metastasizing. So what has happened is we have also suggested as part of the priorities is to develop new new technologies and new computational mathematical approaches that can take all of that new data that we're generating and put it into a framework biologically that tells us which signals a tumor is actually putting out, sending out to cells around it to cause it to protect the tumor. And through that information, we can develop drugs that can intercept those signals. We can now take these vaccines, combine them with these drugs, and we can make a difference. And so this is happening already. We're seeing some of these vaccines being approved or being close to approval, actually, for cancers like melanoma in patients who were not responding to just single agent immunotherapy alone. And we're going to see this happening more and more over the next five years. You're going to see vaccines being approved in the context of being combined with some of these immunotherapies. We know that there are many different um, types of uh, high-risk signals. Uh, There are genetic signals that make a patient high-risk, and there are about 10 to 20 percent of cancers we can actually screen for genes in a person's uh, genome even before they develop a cancer and tell them that they are at high risk for certain cancers. Well, those are the first individuals we're going to want to be able to intercept, to give vaccines early before the cancers develop. But there's also a lot of work being done uh, to better understand what are some of the environmental factors that lead to cancers um, and their development. And actually, the immune system plays a role in that too. We call it inflammation, early inflammation. We need to understand early, before these diseases develop, what are the changes in the inflammation or the immune signals that are going from a normal response against infection to one that is going to help 
diseases develop. Another important priority was really childhood diseases. Childhood diseases develop differently from adult diseases. Adult diseases are very complex. There are genetic changes, but there are also long-term environmental changes. Those genetic changes also are very different from what we see in childhood cancers. Childhood cancers, have, for the most part, have a very specific genetic change. We call it a fusion protein, where a piece of their DNA breaks off and fuses with another piece of their DNA and makes specialized proteins. Well, the immune system can see those fusions. The problem is we don't know all of those fusions yet. It wasn't until recently that we even had the technologies to be able to sequence for those fusions. And then again, my, my mathematical expert colleagues had to develop ways in which we can understand mathematically what those fusions are, taking all the data from sequencing and determine what the proteins were that were expressed by these fusions. Well, now we can do it. And we're starting to see immunotherapies um, being able to help those as well. And the Cancer Research Institute is trying to help diseases that are rare and not being attended to by funding from other bigger places, such as the National Cancer Institute or from uh, pharmaceutical industries. And so we're able to develop a vaccine that targets that fusion um, protein, and we give immunotherapy agents, and we're seeing patients who had no treatments available having remissions, long-term remissions. So again, the power of the immune system and understanding what the immune system is seeing in the cancer. So I'm very optimistic about where things are going. Other priorities go beyond even immunotherapy, have importance with immunotherapy, but go beyond. And they go to aspects that patients really care about. First of all, trying to develop therapies for underrepresented um, uh, populations. And this is very important because when we do analyze tumors, if we don't make sure our populations are diverse, we're not going to be able to move from treating one type of cancer as all patients um, with that one type of cancer, such, lung, such as lung cancer, have the same cancer, to saying, hey, this person's lung cancer is slightly different than that person's lung cancer. So we really need to engage all patients in our clinical trials. We need to do a better job. The goal is to give patients the best quality of life while they're getting treatment and then after the treatment. So that was another priority of the Blue Ribbon Panel that, again, funding is going towards. I do have to say that the funding was only for seven years, and it's a great start, and it's brought together other foundations such as the Cancer Research Institute. I'm very optimistic. We can't stop now. We have to continue the trajectory so that a decade from now, cancer will look very different and patients won't fear the bad diseases associated with cancer. Thank you for joining the Cancer Research Institute Patient Immunotherapy Summit. We hope you've found this program valuable in your cancer journey. We firmly believe information is the first step toward change and it can undoubtedly save lives. Thank you to all of our experts for sharing their knowledge and committing their lives to advancing immunotherapy and persevering in the fight against cancer. I thank the Cancer Research Institute for its commitment to this cause, for funding the research that is saving lives, for bringing people together, and for turning the discoveries into groundbreaking immunotherapy treatments that save lives. We are grateful to our generous sponsors that make this program possible and available at no cost to all. I'm honored to be part of this event, and I wish you and your loved ones health and strength. Remember that you can access this program at any time on cancerresearch.org. And if you are interested in scheduling a free and confidential appointment to find a clinical trial for you or a loved one, visit our website at cancerresearch.org slash cancer dash clinical trials. CRI won't stop until we create a world immune to cancer. Thank you.